Here we have an example that was included in your node voltage method worksheets. In this complicated circuit, we cannot isolate elements to be to form equivalent series and resistance elements other than R1 and R2 and R5 and R6. But that doesn't really help us determine all of the potentials and all of the currents that are flowing through the circuit. So what we're going to do is use the node voltage method to solve this circuit completely. The first step of the node voltage method is to identify the essential nodes of the circuit. Now remember that the essential nodes are connections of three or more elements. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my circuit diagram and identify those nodes and label them. I see that right here I have a connection of, two, of more than two elements or three elements. I'm going to call that node A. Right here I have a connection of more than two elements and I'm going to call that node B. And right here I have my current supplies my voltage supply and resistor R6 all connected to the same point. I'm going to call that node C. All right, the next thing that we need to do when we go through the node voltage method is to designate one of the essential nodes that we've identified as being our zero voltage reference point. This is an arbitrary assignment, but what I'm going to suggest that you do is you select the node usually that has the most connections associated with it, which in this case is node C. So I'm going to denote that we're going to call node C our zero voltage reference point. Now, we need to develop independent equations so that we can solve this circuit. We have three essential nodes, so that means that we need two independent equations to solve this circuit. We don't have any of the special cases for um, connected uh, nodes or super nodes that we uh, have been talking about. So this is a straightforward example. We know that we, since we have three essential nodes, we need two equations to be developed. So I'm going to isolate the two nodes to develop my equations. The first one I'm going to isolate is node A. So I'm going to sketch out all of the elements that are connected to node A. I have a 100 ohm resistor, a 300 milliamp supply, a 130 ohm resistor in node A. That's connected also to a 22 ohm and a 10 volt supply. And it's also going to be connected to node B through a 150 ohm resistor. Now what we want to do is we want to look at the currents that are leaving this node. We're going to make an assumption that all of the currents that flow out of node A are going to be leaving node A. Now we know that this can't be the case, but this is going to be the assumption that we're going to use to write the equations. Okay, I'm going to call the current through this path I1, the current through this path I2, and the current through this path I3. Using Kirchhoff's current law, we know that the sum of all of those currents that are leaving the node must be equal to zero. We can't have any accumulation of current or any accumulation of charge. So now what I want to do is use Ohm's law to rewrite these currents in terms of node voltages. Right here, I1 is an easy case because that's already given to us. We have this 300 milliamp cur current supply, and this 300, milliamp cur this 300 milliamp current supply is always going to be providing 0.3 amps or 300 milliamps of current into node A. Based on our assumption that current always flows out of the node that we're interested in analyzing, we can write that the current out or the I1 current is going to be equal to this 300 milliamps in the opposite direction. So this is going to be negative 0.3 amps. So we have that one settled. Now the next thing that we need to do is to determine or rewrite the current through this path. We're going to invoke Ohm's law to rewrite that current. 
And the way that we do that is we know that current, according to Ohm's law, is equal to the potential difference that's developed across the elements divided by the resistance of the elements. We don't know what the voltage at this node is, at node A is, and that's what we're trying to find. So we're going to create a variable there, and we're going to call the current that leaves through this path as being the potential difference between the voltage, this unknown node voltage, which I'm going to call V sub A, minus the 10 volts that's provided by this voltage supply. That is going to be, in turn, divided by the resistance between those two elements. And that is 22 ohms. Now I'm going to do the same thing for node, or for this current I3, which connects node A to node B. In this case, for current 3, we know neither the voltage at node A nor the voltage at node B. One thing that we're assuming by assuming current always leaves the node that we're interested in is that that node has a higher potential to it. So I'm going to write that first in my Ohm's law equation. So we don't know the voltage at node A, and the potential difference across this resistor is going to be the difference in resistance, uh, excuse me, it's going to be the difference in the potential from node A to node B. We write that as VA minus VB divided by the resistance that separates them, 150 ohms. So now I can plug those um, current back into my Kirchhoff's current law equation, which will result in a formula that looks like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation slightly so that we can use it uh, later on. And you'll see why I'm doing this. What I'm going to do is algebraically rearrange this and I can rewrite this equation as the unknown voltage at node A plus 1 over 22 ohms plus 1 over 150 ohms minus the voltage, the unknown voltage at node B times 1 over 150 ohms is equal to 0 0.3 amps, positive now because I brought it to the other side of the equation, plus 10 volts over 22 ohms. All right, so that's one of the node equations that we need, and this is the equation for node A. Now, we need to look at the circuit again, and we need to develop no a node equation for node B. All right, so again, I'm going to sketch out all of the elements that are connected to node B. I have a 150 ohm resistor that connects node A to B. I have a 100 in series with a 120 ohm resistor that connects down to my reference voltage at node C, which is at zero volts of potential, because we said it was, and also a 20 milliamp supply which is also going to be connected down to the zero voltage reference potential. Again, I'm going to assume when I write my node voltage equations that all of the currents are going to be leaving the node. So again, I'm going to invoke Kirchhoff's current law, which states that all of these currents leaving the node must sum to zero. So I4 plus I5 plus I6 must sum to zero. I4 we can rewrite using Ohm's law, and that states that the potential difference across this element, uh, excuse me, Ohm's law states that the current from B to A is going to be the potential difference developed across this resistance of 150 ohms divided by the resistance itself. Again, since we're assuming that current is always leaving the node, that means that the voltage at node B must be higher than the voltage at node A. So since we're writing these independent equations, we want to assume that the voltage at node B, in this case, is higher than the voltage at node A. 
when we wrote the node A equations, we assumed that the voltage at node A was higher than B. You need to be consistent when you do that because this is the assumption that you're making that the current always leaves the node when we invoke Kirchhoff's current law. So the current through R4 can be written as the voltage at node B minus the voltage at node A divided by 150 ohms. We'll proceed much the same way for the current through, resist, uh, the current through path 5 through these two resistors right here. Right here is going to be the voltage at node B minus the voltage at node C, which we have defined to be 0 volts, divided by the total resistance of this path, which is 100 plus 120 ohms, or a total of 220 ohms. Finally, for path 6, I6, that is already given to us by this 20 milliamp supply. We see that the 20 milliamp supply is directed away from the node, so in this case, based on how we've assumed the direction of current flow, we can write that the current through this path is going to be a positive 20 milliamps, or to be consistent with the units, 0.02 amps. Okay. I'm going to plug all of that back into my Kirchhoff's current law equation, which gives me VB minus VA over 150 ohms plus VB over 220 ohms plus 0 0.02 amps. And again, I'm going to algebraically rearrange this equation so that I have negative VA multiplied by 1 over 150 ohms plus VB multiplied by 1 over 150 ohms plus 1 over 220 ohms. And all of that, oops, all of that was originally equal to zero. I'm going to move this 0 0.02 amps over to the other side of the equation, so that will become negative, 0 0.02 amps. And this becomes our second independent equation. So now what we have done is we've developed an independent node voltage equation for node A, and we've developed an independent node voltage equation for node B. We have two equations in two unknowns, unknown voltage A and unknown voltage B, that we can solve simultaneously, either through substitution or linear algebra. So um, you can use whichever method you prefer. I would uh, highly suggest that you get uh, familiar with using your calculators to perform um, linear algebra uh, calculations and solving simultaneous equations. So if we do that simultaneous equation, and we solve both of them for VA and VB, the end result will be that the voltage at node A is equal to 15.4 volts, and we find that the voltage at node B is equal to 7.39 volts. So in conclusion, what we've done is we've taken the node voltage approach, we've determined two independent equations for the uh, voltage at node A and the voltage at node B. And by developing those independent equations, we can solve them simultaneously to determine the voltage at node A and node B. With the voltage at these essential nodes known, and assuming that the voltage at node C is zero, we can now calculate all of the currents that flow through the circuit as well. So the circuit is now completely specified by writing those two independent equations and solving them simultaneously.